Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant, and this is Space Engine. Now, many of you may have heard of this before, but for those of you that haven't, this is a procedurally generated universe. That's right, not just a galaxy, but an entire universe full of thousands upon thousands of galaxies, each of them potentially containing trillions of planets. So not only can you seamlessly navigate from star to star, but you can seamlessly land on every single planet that this game features. The game generates the surface of the planets in real time. As we fly over the surface here, we can see the very rocky areas here, the very mountainous terrain of this very gorgeous looking planet. Now, this particular planet does have an atmosphere, and in addition to that, it's orbiting a blue star, so that's why the hues here are very blue. As we travel away, we can see the atmospheric scattering, as well as the aurora borealis on this planet's pole. So, there's no transitions to loading screens here, nothing is obfuscated. We can totally move where we like, how we like, as fast as we like. As with many other planets, this one does indeed have a moon, and we can travel to that one right now. So what I'm going to do is navigate around a few planets here, show you what they look like, show you a few features of the terrain, before jumping into the depths of space and probably travel to an entirely different galaxy. As you can see, all of these planets and moons have a huge amount of detail, and although as you get close to them, that detail does seem to pop in somewhat, that is generally a limitation on the computer you're using, rather than a limitation on the software itself. Space Engine does require a fairly beefy computer. I'm using an i5 2500K CPU here, and that's getting a little bit long in the tooth now, but probably I'd recommend a faster CPU than that. It does seem to be quite heavily dependent on the CPU you're using. And Space Engine is pretty much the first application or game I've ever used that cries about lack of RAM. Now I've merely got just eight gigabytes of RAM, but I've never had a problem with that in the past, but Space Engine does seem to fairly regularly exceed that and say that I'm out of RAM, at which point the application closes. So if you've got 16 gigs of RAM or more, then you're probably gonna have a much better experience with this. Do keep in mind that the software is still in very early development and hasn't even reached a version one release yet. So in my opinion, it's performance and quality are really outstanding. And here I am once again leaving the surface of the planet going way up into orbit and then out into space. As we move away, you get to see the other planet that this one is orbiting. In the background appears now a massive blue gas giant. Surrounding me here are rich reds and purples. This is the deep midst of a nebula. And very shortly I'll be leaving this and traveling out into the depths of the universe itself. But for now, we're gonna get a closer look at this giant blue gas giant. These planets are not alone in this particular system. The larger star type objects you can see in the background there are also various moons and planets. And you can see a small one just approaching us here and this is gonna whiz by us relatively fast as we are traveling now at a significant speed. Space Engine features asteroids, comets, as well as moons. And many of these moons can be quite small indeed. The one we just whizzed past was probably not much larger than some of the biggest asteroids out there. Now, we could descend down into the atmosphere of this gas giant, but it doesn't have any procedurally generated clouds or anything like that at the moment, so we're going to simply swing by it instead. But this does give us some indication of the size of these planets here. As with anything in space, scale is very difficult to judge, and so one of the few ways of being able to successfully judge the size of something is to get up close to it. All of the planets in the space engine have significant statistics and detail about them, including all of the geology and the ages of these planets, and that is something I'll take a closer look at in a future video. This planet here, in terms of colours at least, is a little bit more Mars-like in its appearance. It looks like there are some significant geological basins on the surface of this planet here, and inside of those, it appears there are many impact craters as well. We can of course get right up close to those impact craters and see the mountain ranges that they have formed, and indeed, we could even stand on top of one of the mountains if we were so inclined. 
The most recent version of Space Engine features support for the Oculus Rift, so if you have a virtual reality headset, you can jump right into Space Engine and fly through space and stand on Alien World as though you were really there. But now it's time to leave this star system, and indeed you can see us moving out of the nebula here now. As we pick up speed, you can see the local stars starting to move past us. Now we are traveling many thousands of times the speed of light. In the vast distance, you can see a colorful orb there. That is a distant galaxy, probably many thousands upon thousands of light years away. But as we pick up speed, you can see the hundreds and thousands of stars and disappear as we now leave the galaxy. Here, every single orb you can see is a distant galaxy. Some of them are relatively small, but here is a larger one, and we are going to fly right into its midst. As we approach, you can see the layers of galactic dust forming massive clouds near the core itself. But we aren't heading there just yet. Instead, we're going to have a short look at this star cluster here. Now, keep in mind, as I mentioned a moment ago, the white dots passing by us here, here as we approach this star cluster, it appears as a massive explosion suspended in time, or the frozen particles of a gigantic welding project. These though are not mere particles, but they are rather massive suns. Increasing our velocity again, we leave the star cluster and look for another interesting sight. Facing the galactic rim, we turn our attention toward the galactic core. At this speed, we can see the galactic dust clouds in motion. And there is yet another nebula. Slowing down now in order to intercept this nebula, we don't want to go too fast and zip right past it. At such a distance, these nebulas may appear quite small, but they are in fact many hundreds of light years across. And as we enter into it now, that scowl begins to become apparent. And momentarily coming to a stop, I briefly search for a star system to visit before resuming my journey. Now this nebula, like many others within Space Engine, is entirely procedurally generated. It's not based on any real world nebula, and it's entirely generated by the software's algorithms. In fact, this same principle applies to most of the galaxies, as well as the vast majority of star systems. That said, Space Engine does use real-world astronomical star catalogues to generate the nebula, galaxies and star systems that we currently know of. The blue dots that you can see here are graphical markers that are used to indicate the locations of planets, moons and other bodies within this particular star system. These markers can of course be disabled, but at this particular moment I haven't done that. Now here is one other planet, we just rapidly zip by the moon here, but we are going to go down to the surface of this planet and have a closer look. Now it does look like a desert planet of some type, so I fully expect the surface of this planet to be both featureless and fairly flat. But that means we can fly over the surface of the terrain here at a rapid pace and see planet rise of that distant world. And once again we fly up out of the atmosphere and toward another planetary body. Even from this distance, that world seems to have a lot more interesting features, including a range of mountains. The blue areas potentially look like oceans or seas, but that would require closer inspection in order to be sure. But for certain here, the blue areas are merely pockets of atmosphere, and the very gases that form it. Unfortunately, travelling at this speed does reveal one or two limitations of the software, and that is its relatively low loading times. But, as I mentioned before, I don't see this in a negative way at all, because the game is very quick to reveal the beauty of its environments. And it's locations like this that are the source of some of the fantastic screenshots from Space Engine you will have no doubt have seen floating around the internet and the various forums. Slowing the velocity down significantly here, you can see that indeed the terrain does have quite a lot of detail, and also much of the pop-up now disappears. Space Engine is truly beautiful. It's an absolutely wonderful piece of software to use and allows you to experience all of the wonders of the galaxy. And putting out praise like this is not something I do lightly. It's one of the reasons I feature so few things on this channel. Generally speaking, they have to make a pretty high grade in order to make an appearance here. Space Engine is available for free. I've put a link to the software and their website in this video's descriptions. So if you do find it at all interesting, go and check it out. I'll be back with plenty more videos on Space Engine. For now, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time. 
This is the Vel Nebula, one of the most beautiful nebulas in the game, and a nebula that is very, very close to home space. At just over 1,000 light years from the edges of inhabited space, you can make it here in around one hour with a well-equipped exploration vessel. The colours in this nebula are truly unique within the elite dangerous galaxy, and anyone that's visited this nebula for even a brief moment will instantly recognise footage from anywhere within it.